here tonight. Um, this has been a very unusual semester for us. Um, it's not initially what we were supposed to do this semester, but we decided that um, we wanted a challenge. So we said, hey, 10 different shows, 10 different numbers, 10 different sets, 10 different costume changes, the whole thing. And our, <laughs> our tech crew um, and our actors have risen to the challenge and we've had so much fun. Um, so <laughs> there's not, you know, one solid storyline to follow. <laughs> But every single one of these numbers has, tells an amazing story. Um, makes you laugh, makes you cry, um, makes you happy, um, and I hope just puts a smile on your face. So I'm gonna pray for us and then we're gonna get started. Father God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the people in this room. God, we hope that all that we do um, honors you and that you would just fill this place with your joy and your presence. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Um, and if you were not here last night, our hostess for the evening is one of our former uh, actors, and um, now she's been my assistant director this um, this go around. Yay! Um, this is Miss Zoe Thompson. And, and she is going to be changing costumes too. So I'm sorry, Zoe. <laughs> it's okay. Hopefully, it brings a smile to your face too. Anyway, thank you. Enjoy the show. Well, hello everyone and welcome. I will be keeping you all company in between each of our numbers and I am so excited to be your host tonight. How this is gonna work is I will guide you all through some fun trivia, maybe some Disney, maybe some Marvel, we'll see. And then I will introduce you to our next number and maybe throw in a dad joke or two. So, without further ado, I will introduce you to our first number for this evening. Our first number will be right before your eyes from the classic book turned musical, James and the Giant Peach. Now, if you were to go see James in theaters, you'd be introduced to the classic characters from that show, such as Aunt Sponge or the Ladybug. But this isn't quite James and the Giant Peach, and we've put our own twist on things. Tonight, you'll be meeting all the characters from our show, from Mary Poppins to Sharpay and Ryan. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and watch a magical world unfold right before your eyes. Enjoy the show. Right before your eyes, there's this horrid pain that shatters your heart. Let's go make it 
getting started tonight with some Marvel trivia. So if you're a Marvel fan in the room, you better shout loud and clear so I can hear you, okay? Our first question. How many Infinity Stones were there? Six! Six! Y'all are smart. It's six. Good job. <laughs> Second question. Where is Captain America from? Shout if you think it's Kansas City, Los Angeles, Brooklyn. There you go, there you go. Third question, who is Tony Stark's father? Is it Robert Downey Jr., Howard Stark, Walt Disney, or Darth Vader? Howard Stark, good job, Bellar's Smart. What type of doctor is Doctor Strange? Shout if he is a podiatrist, a cardiologist, a neurosurgeon. He's a neurosurgeon, good job. Captain America's shield and Bucky's arm are made of what? Vibranium! Goodness, good job y'all. It is vibranium. Which movie kicked off the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Was it A, Hulk, B, Captain America the First Avenger, C, Iron Man? Yes, it was Iron Man. Who was able to pick up Thor's hammer in Endgame? Was it A, Tony Stark, B, Captain Marvel, or D, C, Captain America? It was Captain America. Black Panther is set in which fictional country? It was Wakanda. And now onto our next number. Follow me to 20th century Imperial Russia, where we'll see a tale of love, heartache, war, and peace. Our next number comes from the classic story, Fiddler on the Roof. And today, we find two sisters, Hodel, Hava, and Zaydel, excitedly awaiting who they would be matched with to marry. But things take a turn for the worse when they realize the matchmaker can choose whoever she wishes for the girls to marry, without their consent. And it's kind of concerning. Here's Matchmaker. <laughs> Yenta, Yenta. Well, somebody has to arrange the matches. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. Body of mine, catch me a catch. Matchmaker, matchmaker, look through your book and make me a perfect match. Matchmaker, matchmaker.
throw Cogsworth out the window. He wanted to see time fly. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Speaking of Disney movies, our next set of trivia comes from Disney movies about classic princesses and some others. These are not multiple choice, so if you know the answer, I'll need you to shout it as loud as you can. Okay? Here we go. What are the names of the two sisters in the Disney movie Frozen? There you go. How many brothers does Prince Hans have in Frozen? Close. I'm hearing 12. The answer is 12. What is the name of Wendy's dog in the animated movie Peter Pan? There you go, it's Nana. Which Disney movie is about the daughter of Chief Tui who starts on a mission to return the heart of Goddess Tefiti? Moana. Good job, y'all. Which Disney princess faces envy from her stepmother because of her immense beauty? Close, but not quite. Snow White, the dog over there. What is the name of the lead character in the Disney movie Little Mermaid? Perfect. On to our next number. From Russia, we'll travel by umbrella to Edwardian England for a lively performance from the junior musical adaption of Mary Poppins. Siblings Jane and Michael have cleverly outlasted numerous nannies, but none of them have been quite like Mary Poppins. This practically perfect nanny takes the children by surprise in every way, and today we find the children, Mary, and her good friend Bert on rooftops of London. Bert has summoned a slew of his chimney sweep chaps for a high altitude rollick, where the siblings learn that chimney, sweep chimney sweeps aren't simply normal chimney sweeps, they're dancing chimney sweeps. Here's Step in Time. But up here... That's more like it. Troubles never seem so bad when you look at things from a little higher up. Brush away the dirt and soot. Brush away your tears. Poets that aren't swept away.
Disney movie do you find a girl who disguises herself as a male warrior so that her father is not enlisted among the recruits for a fight against an enemy? Ariel! Oh, Hold on. How many dwarves are there in the story of Snow White? Seven. The answer is seven. What is the name of the Disney princess prince in the movie Tangled? What's his real name? There you go, Flynn Rider. What Disney princess is based on a real person rather than a fairy tale? I heard it. So there you go, the answer is Pocahontas. The toys in the movie Toy Story belong to which boy? Andy. Andy. In the, in the movie Finding Nemo, what is the address that Dory needs to remember? Anybody know? I heard it, 42 Wallaby Way, Sydney. How many muses are there in the movie Hercules? Five. Not quite. Think above 10. The answer is 13. Heard it on the front row, good job. In which Disney movie would we find the characters disgust, anger, fear, and sadness? Inside out, I'll know your stuff. Can you tell me the name of Alice's cat in the movie Alice in Wonderland? What is the name of her cat, though? It's kind of obscure. Her name is Dinah, which I did not know. So I'm impressed if any of y'all did. Who is considered the youngest Disney princess? Anybody know? Snow White, good job. Moana's grandmother has a tattoo of what on her back? The answer is a stingray, good job. Let me flip my page here. Which Disney movie is about a rat who wishes to become a renowned French chef? There we are! What is the name of the protagonist in the movie Zootopia? Judy Hobbs. Thank you. On to our next number. As the rooftops of London fade from our view, a soft melody fills the air. Lyrics carry the daydreams and fantasies of a young girl wishing to escape the only world she's ever known. The melody draws us to our story's hero, Ariel, and we find her musing among the trinkets she's collected throughout her lifetime under the sea. Her heart's deepest wish is to be free of the watery prison she feels trapped in. One of Disney's most beloved and well-known ballads, Here's Part of Your World.
What is the name of the princess in the movie Sleeping Beauty? Aurora, thank you. On to our next number. The misery of unrequited love is so painful, so acute, that it is best described as agony. This is the name and subject of our next number. In such agony are two brother princes, one hopelessly in love with Cinderella and the other enamored with Rapunzel. The fair maidens they love have spurred them, ignored them, taken their hearts and driven them into the ground. And these two brothers cannot understand why for the life of them the objects of their love remain just out of reach. The only natural response, of course, is to run far into the woods and sing their hearts out. Without further ado, from Into the Woods Junior, here is Agony. wondered where you'd gone. I've spent all night looking for her. The beautiful one I danced the night with. Well, where did she go? <clears throat> Disappeared. I too have found a lovely maiden. She sits in the top of a tall tower that has no doors or stairs. Then how did you manage a visit? I stand beneath her tower and say, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. And she lowers the longest, most beautiful head of hair, yellow as corn. Which I climbed to her. Rapunzel? What kind of name is that? You jest. Well, she's as true as your maiden. A maiden running from a prince. Does that make any sense? None would run from us. Yet, one has. Did I mistreat her or show her disdain? Why does she run from me? If I should lose her, how shall I regain the heart she has won from me? Agony, beyond power of speech, when the one thing you want is the only thing out of your reach. High in her tower, she sits by the hour, maintaining her hair. Humming and frequently humming the light-hearted air oh, Agony, far more painful than yours And you know she would go with you If there only were doors Agony, oh the torture they teach What's as intriguing or half so fatiguing as what's out of reach. Am I not sensitive, clever, well-mannered, considerate, passionate, charming, as kind as I'm handsome, an heir to a throne? Or everything maidens could wish for, then why not? Do I know? The girl must be mad. You know nothing of madness. Till you're climbing her hair and you see her up there as you're nearing her all the while hearing her rock. Jamaican servant. He has a very long name. 
Just FYI. Does anyone know the full name? His full name is Horatio Thelonious Ignatius Crustaceous Sebastian. <laughs> Just FYI. Fun fact. What are the cute little monsters named in Moana? Anybody know? Close, actually. Their name sounds like coconuts. Their name is Kakamora. What does Rapunzel dream of doing? See the lanterns. Exactly right. Now, you might have noticed I messed up a question earlier, and that is, what is Flynn Rider's real name? Jane Fitzherbert. Thank you. What is Buzz Lightyear's classic saying? To infinity, to infinity and beyond. On to our next number. From fairy tale land to Manhattan, our next song is from the Broadway hit Guys and Dolls. The central conflict in this musical surrounds a group of mission workers and a group of gamblers who have little to no interest in being converted to the mission. In Act 2 of the production, the mission workers find a group of gamblers and urge them to confess their sins. Some of the men appear sorrowful and readily confess, but one member isn't quite so ashamed, and his name was Nicely Nicely Johnson. Nicely thinks on his feet and invents a dream full of confession and repentance. Apparently he's convincing, because revival quickly breaks out. From Guys and Dolls Jr., here, sit down, you're rocking the boat. We will now hear a testimony from Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson. <laughs> Brother Nicely Nicely Johnson? Well, uh, it, it actually happened to be kind of uh, funny, you know, like a dream. Yes, that's it, like a dream. I dreamed last night I got on a boat to heaven, and by some chance I had brought my dice along, and there I stood. And I hollered, someone made me. But the passengers, they know right from wrong. For the people all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. People all said, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. And the devil will drag you under by the sharp lapel of your checkered coat. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, you're rocking the boat. to heaven, a great big wave came and washed me overboard, and as I sank, and I hollered, someone save me, that's the moment I woke up, thank the It's 
starts with an S. The answer is Slave One. Alrighty. What is the nickname of the Wookiee bounty hunter Snuba? These are hard questions, y'all. His name is Mad Claw. Who kissed Princess Leia first? Anybody know? I heard Han somewhere, and that's the right answer. I thought it was Luke for a second, but it wasn't. How old is Yoda when he dies? Anyone know? Yoda was 900 years old when he died, which is very, very old. Who killed Han Solo? Kylo Ren, in the back, good job. Let's see, what is the name of the Death Star's original commander? His name was Grand Moff Tarkin. These are very hard questions, so I apologize. On to our next number. Let's stay in the Northeast, but hop about 70 years or so, and over to Massachusetts. Our next number comes from the hit Legally Blonde musical. The story centers around Elle Woods, a fun-loving sorority girl who hopes to marry her longtime boyfriend, Warner. Throughout the musical, we watch Elle as she has her hopes dashed, picks herself up again, and fights to succeed against all odds. Today, we find her at Harvard, where Elle is crushed because she's just watched her ex, who she's still not over, propose to his new girlfriend right in front of her. Obviously, she's sad, but that is only until she hears some news that she wasn't quite expecting. From Legally Blonde Jr., here's so much better. We love you, Zoe! Good job. 
Who is Han Solo's most loyal friend, who is also his first mate? Chewbacca. Y'all got it. Let's see, hard one. What is the creature that lives in the garbage compactor of the original Death Star called? I wish, honestly. It was actually a Dianoga, but I want to see that version. What is the original Star Wars where Jabba the Hutt is first seen? Good job, that one was hard. Who famously says, you, or who is famously called a scruffy looking nerve herder? Anyone know? Han Solo. Who are the two siblings in Star Wars? The answer is Luke and Leia. Who was the Jedi Master that was ordered to create clones? Does anyone know? Any fans of Clone Wars in here? It was actually sifo -Dyas. It's kind of obscure. From the halls of Harvard to a faraway place where caravan camels roam. Agrabah, to be exact. From the Broadway production of Aladdin the Musical Junior, this number introduces us to Aladdin and his three, and his three best friends, Babtak, Omar, and Kasim. The four friends are accustomed to a life of thievery and smuggling, stealing scraps for food just to get by. But now, it seems their consciences have caught up with them, and they decide to give working for their wages a try. In song form, of course. This is a musical after all. Here's Babcak, Omar, Aladdin, and Kasim. <laughs> We gather a crowd, sing, dance, put on a little show, and then people give us money. They just give us money. We don't take it out of their pockets or swindle them or anything. I told you, we're turning in a leaf. We're going to earn our money. I don't know. People paying to watch other people sing and dance? Who does that? It might be nice to get some positive attention for once. Positive? Performing like little dancing monkeys for loose change? It's embarrassing. It's degrading! You can sing lead. It's so time. A five, six, seven. <laughs>
pita chip. in Star Wars. Mon Calinari, there you go. On what planet can you find the hidden rebel base? Anybody know? Starts with a Y, actually. Yavin 4, goodness. That was impressive. <laughs> what is the name of the planet where Anakin Skywalker loses the duel against Obi-Wan and leaves him mangled and burned? Most of our goodness, same person. You are smart, sir. <laughs> I can't see. The light is very bright. I apologize. <laughs> what is the battle armor used by Boba Fett? Anyone know? Best car. There you are. In the first Death Star, what detention block was Princess Leia being held in? Very obscure. Close, but not quite. The answer is double A-23. What animal did Han and Luke ride on in the snow while on hop? Tauntaun, there you go. Who is the famous mentor of Luke Skywalker? The answer is Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm gonna be completely honest with y'all. You guys are very smart and I am out of questions. So how are y'all doing tonight? Everybody good? How many kids do we have in the room tonight? Got a good number, okay. What has been y'all's favorite number so far? Agony, oh my goodness, I have loved Agony. Fun fact, my brother is in Agony. Should brag a little bit, he's pretty cool. Well, thank y'all for coming tonight. We very much appreciate having you here. And it is time for our next number. And now we come to our final number from the evening, from, Lion, from the Lion King Jr. Simba, the story's hero, has banished himself from the Pride Land after the tragic death of his father, Mufasa. The rest of the Pride believed Simba was also dead, and he thought it was best that way. He grew up estranged from his family, blaming himself daily for a murder he didn't commit. That is, until a chance encounter with his childhood friend, Nala. She informed him that his cruel uncle had usurped the throne and was draining the Pride Land of its life and resources. The lions desperately needed their true king, but Simba didn't have the courage to return home. That is, until Rafiki, an old friend, showed him where his strength truly came from. He was his father's son. Mufasa's strength lived on inside of Simba. From the Lion King Jr., here's our final number, He Lives in You.
know what I have to do, but it means facing my past. What's that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. Yeah, but it still hurts. Ah, yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or you can learn from it. You see? So what are you going to do now? I'm going back. Good. Get out of here. any of this uh, without. Um, but first of all, thank you to White Chapel and to WC Kids for um, providing us a place for this. Um, to be able to come, have a safe place, be who we are, do what we love to do, and support um, amazing kiddos like this. A um, shout out to Jordy and John David supporting us up in the booth up there. Hi. And then um, <clears throat> I'm going to move on to my fantastic A team. Woohoo! Yeah, Woo! 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 Um, first up is someone who is helpful, brave, sweet, gracious, kind, responsible, godly, talented, driven, and hardworking. Please welcome my assistant director, Zoe Thompson. Um, 
amazing person is amazing, skillful, loving, they have a beautiful smile, a servant's heart, they're talented, thoughtful, a team player, and giving. Please welcome my jack of all trades, Avery Lewis. <laughs> Amazing. These two amazing babysitters, if you ever need one, just shout out. Shout out for them. Um, all right, next up is somebody who I'm so, so glad to have um, met a few years ago, had in the program, and now excited to have on the team. In fact, actually, all of these people you'll see um, have been in the program before. Um, he is fun, courageous, talented, caring, giving, kind. He lights up the room and is full of life. Uh, please welcome Assistant Stage Manager Ovid Schultz. <clears throat> the next person has a special place in my heart. Um, she's an amazing artist. Um, they are loving, creative, funny, responsible, fantastic writer, um, talented, welcoming, um, loves to reach out and welcome anyone. Um, and I'm so proud of them. Uh, please welcome Assistant Stage Manager Lee Blaylock. fantastic job overseeing um, kind of the new team of these kiddos we've created. Um, he's been great at teaching. He has been keeping everybody's head on straight, and he's just been a strong member of the team for a few years. He's gracious, talented, loyal, he's accepting, he's kind, hardworking, caring, giving, and fun. Uh, please welcome our show winner, Gavin Zaitsev. few more. We're done. I promise. Um, I would be remiss, though, if I did not recognize this amazing tech crew, um, especially this next person. Um, he is loyal, creative, hardworking, persevering, talented, kind, funny, loving, and strong. Um, he took on leading all of that heavy lifting and all of that changing, and that takes a lot of uh, amazing hard work, and um, he took it on without blinking an eye, and I'm so proud of him. Uh, please bid up for our stage manager, uh, Daniel Flip. <laughs> and I'm so glad to have this next person, um, because otherwise they'd have to have me as their vocal coach. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um, and this she is uh, creative. She can do anything and has proved that this semester by teaching herself to sew, has built things that didn't know she could build. Um, just been amazing. She's patient, talented, loving, driven, thoughtful, smart, and a good friend. Please welcome our music director, Lindy Hagen. <laughs> hard. I can't do it. So. <laughs> no, she's amazing. <clears throat> and certainly, uh, last but not least, um, someone who um, has built a team, has trained them, um, has created and worked tech movements, um, designed lights, has built sets, has created the set designs, um, coordinating all of it, keeping all of our heads on straight, especially mine, um, helps in casting, takes care of us, um, is honorable, determined, creative, dedicated, caring, loyal, smart, gives more than 100% every time. He is a leader, he is focused, uh, protective, and he brings the magic. Please welcome our tech director, Richard Wordberg. Thank you guys again so much for coming. Registration for spring opens on December 1st. Auditions are January 7th and 8th. And if you wonder why 